today we are going to talk about a very important topic yeah that is called tissue homeostasis and to talk about tissue homeostasis I'm going to talk about two key points one of them will be uh, contact inhibition mm -hmm. that we have here about that topic before and later I will talk about uh, cell competition okay so these two topics so to introduce the idea of tissue homeostasis yeah I'm going to talk about cell competition and uh, contact inhibition then I will move now, now that you have the basis to understand uh, this topic of tissue homeostasis, I will talk about different lines of evidence shown by this lab, Rosenblatt lab, in 2013 that they uh, published this very important article that they showed that saberfish, hu uh, uh, humans, and also these in vitro cells uh, from kidney of dogs, canine, these canine kidney cells, um, they they are very important uh, because they show that when you have a tissue that have too many cells, just because of mechanical tension, the cells will have to die. Okay, so they will be extruded and then they will die. So imagine. It's like uh, if you are in a bus or in the subway and there is too many people you decide to leave because yeah there is no more space same thing happened with the cells there will be no more space and they will end up uh, end up being extruded and they leave the epithelium and then they end up being killed so this seems to be an important mechanism to regulate uh, to regulate cell numbers so this is why the title here is crowded induced live extrusion to maintain homeostatic cell numbers and then uh, if we have time this class or in the following class we will talk about this guy that it shows uh, mainly the same information but use uh, back the back of the flies that is called the nodum and that's here you can see in red some of you have uh, described some of this uh, paper and he not only showed that in flies but also showing silico so the all this information together uh, it showed that this seems to be a very important field a growing field and there have been a lot of articles uh, uh, discussing more of these points uh, later I will talk about uh, your research project that as you will see I will put them all your work is in the context of what they, they, uh, these two papers talk about and you are also contributing to understand these phenomena that we are talking about here so the only difference is that uh, we are using a different mechanism that, that show um, that try to make more complete this idea yeah that uh, it can show light in different aspects of, of this uh, very important mechanism of tissue homeostasis. Okay, so let's start. So when we talk about tissue homeostasis, yeah, in terms of cell numbers, we generally, in the beginning, we were talking about cell cycle, you know, that how epithelia, how different tissues uh, control their cell numbers and two main cell processes were taken into account proliferation and cell death and we said you know they should be in a normal tissue you should have a balance between these two tissues yeah uh, but it's not only uh, it's not only the cell cycle to understand to understand tissue homeostasis we need to understand other topics so for example we know that there is a combination between internal and external environments that allow the tissues to report and to maintain the tissue homeostasis. So, so for example, we know that the environment also play a, a key role. The radiation also can play a key role. And one way, for example, to we know that uh, if the cells are in and uh, you put them under UV radiation, and I will show you some of the experiments that they did. 
they they kill cells with UV radiation and all these different uh, mechanisms to regulate tissue homeostasis what it happened they lead to uh, cellular rearrangement so not only proliferation not only cell death uh, as you have work uh, the oscillations of the cells seems to be also an important mechanism the changes in cell shape the cells tend to mix so so although from a very general perspective we will think about tissue homeostasis in terms of these two only two process it seems that they need all the process to collaborate and to work together however cell extrusion right now is a key regulator of epithelial, epithelial homeostasis and they are, uh, help us to understand they um, they regulate almost homeostasis by removing apoptotic cells and we will talk about that they help us uh, to orchestrate morphogenesis so if you remember the video of, of apoptosis that it shows that the membranes between fingers are removed during development so apoptosis is very important for that and finally there is a competition between cell populations that are healthy and unhealthy and, uh, and apoptosis allows us to uh, to remove the unhealthy cells in normal conditions okay so tissue homeostasis is an important field that is growing and now we know that we have internal external environments and that there is a lot of cell rearrangement and to understand tissue homeostasis we have uh, two uh, fields of research that uh, uh, they have a start for for decades yeah that they uh, they have many decades of work and we in previous classes we have talked about contact inhibition uh, that is one of those and if you see this video sorry if you see this uh, diagram here you see a cell here looking from the top and here only from the lateral view and you see that here there is a space here there is a space 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 so there is a space everywhere so what happened the cells receive a signal and they allow them as they find more space they will start moving and proliferating until there is no more space and there is uh, cell contacts um the, there is they start getting into contact one cell to another one and in that way they stop proliferating and they stop moving so in other words contact inhibition is a process of arresting of uh, cell growth and uh, when they are resting on, on, on cell growth happen because the cells come in contact to each other okay and and you are have talked about this I just remind you this is very important and it was a study in favor plus and for the following article that will be important now I'm going to talk about also another topic that is called cell competition so cell competition uh, is another uh, area of research that has grown a lot in the last uh, decades and it was well contact inhibition we were working in fibroblasts or it is starting fibroblasts in, in tissue culture here it was uh, started in working with fruit flies and in here you see two populations of cells and they in green you call the winner cells and in purple you have loser cells yeah so when you have these two type of cells they start competing for the space for nutrients and there are three scenarios you know one thing that it can happen is that they can live happy forever or one or thing that could happen is that they will uh, self-organize they will sort and uh, another thing that generally happens is that they are eliminated well, so one of them get eliminated by the other one so and we're very interested in this one now in this behavior because we know that uh, cell competition is a fitness control mechanism yeah so the unhealthy cells yeah can be killed and in many cases the, the less uh, fit cells the ones that have mutations are removed from the tissue and in that way you prevent cancer uh, to appear so 
uh, in cell competition, the less fit cells, that we call it the looser cells, are eliminated from the tissue from uh, for optimal survival of the host. Okay, so talk about two main mechanisms, contact inhibition, cell competition, and one, both areas of research seem to be complementary, seems to have some things in common, and, and, and slowly they start separating from each other. We will see where the information takes us maybe in 10 or 20 years. But in the next section, I'm going to focus, um, talk a little bit, show you a video about contact inhibition, and later I will talk a little bit more in detail about cell competition. When normal cells are introduced into a petri dish at low numbers, they be when normal cells are introduced into a petri dish at low numbers, they begin to divide and proliferate. As the cells begin to touch one another, they slow their rate of division. This behavior is a consequence of the process called contact inhibition. Once the cells fill up the bottom of the dish, the rate of cell division slows further and is balanced by the rate of cell death such that the total cell number remains constant. This state is called confluence. Contact inhibition ensures that the cells create a layer only one cell thick, a monolayer. The behavior of cancer cells is quite different. If a cancer cell is seeded among normal cells, all of the cells will proliferate as before. However, once confluence is reached, the normal cells will regulate their growth, while the cancer cells continue to divide in an unregulated manner, yielding a clump of cells, which is often called a focus. Contact inhibition can be demonstrated in vitro by removing cells from a confluent monolayer. In this experiment, cells are removed by scratching the monolayer with a needle. The surviving cells at the edge of the wound now do two things. One, they begin to proliferate more rapidly since they are no longer fully contact inhibited. And two, they migrate into the empty area of the wound, attempting to fill it up. Okay, so that is a very cool video that show a very clear example of contact inhibition. Now I'm going to show, talk a little bit more about the other mechanism that is cell competition. So, as I told you before, uh, and this is going to be maybe many of the papers that we talk about sex comes and epithelia and rotation and cancer, that uh, the transition between uh, these two process, between a normal and a cancer epithelia is very difficult to study. Yeah, And we know that most of the cancer between 70 to 90 percent depending on 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 the authors uh, come from have an, op an epithelial origin yeah so this is why it's so important to study epithelial and in particular cell competition because uh, it's in that cell competition what it has been shown for de uh, decades of research is that is a uh, a widespread mechanism leading to the expansion of one cell population uh, through elimination and replacement of another one. So as I told you, you will see two populations. And what generally happens is when you have, they are combined, the one of them end up being removing. So how, being removed. So, uh, so how was this found in fruit flies? Because you can create patches of cells with a mutation and generally what happens is if you have a the mutation, for example, is you have the wild type will be the blue one. Let's suppose that, and here the mutant it will be the orange one. So what they found is those cells disappear. So everybody was very surprised. It's like okay, we create those cells and we observe them. They are there, but later all of them are gone. So what has happened? That. Uh, there was a process of apoptosis of the mutant cell. 
and independent of the system we found that multiple times in different stages we found those things however the problem is when the opposite happened yeah that you can create other mutations so for example Dagen was working with a mutation that is uh, RAS yeah and if you have RAS you remember that you will have a over proliferation and you if you combine RAS with another mutation that if you remember this is RAS1 RAS B12 the names of the mutations if you can make a scribble uh, is a, it's just a cell junction yeah accept a, a, a a septic junction, a junction of the flies. When you mix these two, uh, now the opposite start happening. Now the cells that start winning in the competition is the is this one. And actually, it's a it's a very invasive uh, combination of mutations. And uh, what it had been shown in different papers is that um, that uh, actually the the normal cells start being killed by the start losing the competition so again this is a very important topic and here is it's very related to what we study in cancer uh, as i said before cell competition has been understood in terms of winners and loser cells uh, what is perfect yeah uh, and, it, and it's clear that it's a control mechanism uh, and if you in the past if you remember how experiments were done in the past so we have to kill the samples yeah so we produce the mutation and kill the sample and look for the cell mutated cell so you look uh, you look uh, in the stage one then you look at the stage four and the mutated cell was gone so now we not only can see in the two and the initial in the final stage what we can see is the entire process, yeah, because now we have uh, cells that have been outlined with GFP, and what we like, so what we have observed and what you have worked is that we have a lot of changes in apical um, area and shape, yeah. So that the, while the cells are being eliminated, you find also that the there is exchange in cell neighbors and you also see a lot of extrusion yeah but all of them are happening simultaneously so this idea of cell competition and we will cover that in the following classes if and now we don't understand only from the final and to the, the the initial and final stage we have a more complete idea of what is happening So uh, ma many of you know this story that uh, in fruit flies, um, although we know them like this, like in the auto fly, the another important uh, uh, stage of development is the larvae, and here you find a match between the tissues from the larvae and the uh, and the adults. So if you see only these small regions the color coded are the ones that are going to survive this one and this one the rest uh, of the larvae is going to go to diet yeah so one thing that is going to happen during development is that you will need a lot of proliferation yeah a lot of proliferation to turn these small pieces of tissue yeah just dozens of cells into thousands of cells so for that reason um fruit flies became a, a just a great model to study cancer why because in a short time you have a lot of proliferation so while in humans you need um 
decades to study cancer, yeah, to see how the mutations start. In uh, fruit flies, uh, we have a perfect system, like uh, in the larvae and the pupae, that you will find a lot of proliferation, so you will see the growth of tumors very fast if you use mutations and you use uh, other genetic tools. So here you can see in green, you will see the outline of the cells. And here in red, just you're marking the histones. Uh, so you will see the nucleus. Yeah, so you will see here a movie of a wing of a fly in an early stage. And you will see like bubbles that are exploding. So this is the uh, an example of how fast are the cell divisions. So they are just rapidly dividing and dividing and dividing. And there is even more. So if we put a tumor, if we put a, a cell with a mutation, there what we will see is the tumor having proliferating and start competing with other cells there for the space and resources. So this is why it became so important to study fruit flies. And um, we saw what happened when the when there is not any more a balance between proliferation and cell death. Yeah, you have too much proliferation and very little cell death. Well, in normal cases, like the one that you're observing here, you find uh, a, a normal proliferation between cell death and, and, and yeah, between these two processes. Uh, what I focus on, what you have studied uh, for um, with me, is so what you have been studying with me is the pupil stages yeah so here if you see again this is the adult and in, after the larvae you have the pupil stage here you have already um the structures already created yeah there is now you have to refine it it's like if you have you're making a statue you know and you have a bl big block, so you have the big block, and now you start removing pieces. So this is what happened during the pupil stage, and to do that, we need apoptosis, and we need a lot of cellular process taking place. Yeah, so here we will talk later about this um, phenomena that is happening, that is how the cell dead starts shaping the back of the fly, and how changes in cell density are very important. And um, what you have been doing is following the same information. So these are just uh, movies that we will talk later. But in all of them, what all our students have been doing is trying to study how the cells died, how the cell mix, all these processes that are related to cell competition. Okay, so uh, I just finished telling you a little bit of the introduction. So now I just want that in this moment to try to remember that we talk about two key process, yeah, for tissue homeostasis to know so that uh, there should be a balance between proliferation and cell death. And they have been studied through contact inhibition and also through the other process that I talk is cell competition. And I at the end, I show you that uh, the projects that you have been developing uh, have been related to the topic of cell competition and that fruit flies are uh, just a very interesting system that uh, uh, to study this phenomenon. Now I'm going to get away from fruit flies and I'm going to talk about uh, these three different models they use in vivo, in, z in zebrafish, in vitro. Uh, uh, here with MDCK uh, MD cells and also they use human colon cells and uh, they show again that crowding induced that the cells died to maintain homeostasis, tissue homeostasis in terms of cell numbers. Okay, so let me talk about this paper and in the beginning I'm just going to give you an introduction and then I will get into the figures of the paper. So first thing that I want that you do is that you read the title. 
and so now try to think about the title what do you think that it means why i wonder you do that because um the title summarizes the main idea of the paper in most of the cases so when you're writing your review paper or when you're writing the if you're writing the experimental component you need to think what type of title you need to to get that summarize the entire paper when you are writing up your proposal in for your job you know that you're working in ecology and you want to protect i don't know trees the arctic something like that your proposal in the title need to summarize uh, the main idea yeah so if you remember when we talk about science communication the titles were, already gave most of the information and sometimes uh, the titles are the the information that grab the author that grab the reader or that you already lost the reader okay so and in this paper all the scientific papers sometimes have too much information so i'm going to summarize it and, and i'm going to talk about from a very general perspective in the beginning so you understand the basics and then we go into the specific so first thing you remember that i told you there was a uh, balance between proliferation and, and cell death so what they found that generally and this is what we have been talking in the previous classes is that you activate the caspases yeah and when you activate the caspases the cells are removed from the epithelial here you have actin and myosin and they you form a ring and the cells will end up dying and this is what happened in vertebrates in fruit flies the cells will will die they, they go back basally but right now, just for you, remember, in vertebrates, they, they go to the lumen, okay? They go up in these schematics. Um, so this is what it was previously reported. In this paper, what they found is that when you have crowding, the crowding can induce that the cells die. In other words, what you they are going to show you that uh, in zebrafish, in humans, and they're going to show you also that in in vitro when you put uh, in all these conditions when you create examples of crowding the cells are going to leave the epithelial alive and they will end up being killed later okay so so they if you see here there is a different mechanism that is taking place here you they are dead here they can be alive and then they end up being killed later okay so what they are proposing this is why this paper uh, was so famous because it is showing that crowding is important and it's also showing that the cells can uh, can be alive and uh, can it can die by being extruded and still be alive and then you can um, uh, the, there is another process that uh, need uh, uh, need to happen to kill the cells. Later, the the third and very important reason why this paper got into nature because it has a clear implication to cancer. So every time that you see a paper in Nature in Science, the higher impact factor is because they made a very strong connection. With a disease they made uh, or at least in biology a strong connection with diseases a strong uh, 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 something that have a very big implication in this case they found that when you block this type of cell extrusion uh, you can start creating these early stages in cancer so instead of having disorganized epithelia the, the the tissue start uh, getting disorganized okay so here is the main idea of the paper three main components that you need to understand proliferation and that there is a balance and and this is what i have been telling you before this is how tissue homostasis take place first uh, in the what we have been talking and is in your textbook is the apoptosis uh, it was the way that we generally understood how cell death took place. Here, what they are proposing 
and this model has been uh, this paper has been uh, they have been 10 years and people keep elaborating in these ideas and 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 the idea that they propose that the that mechanical tension that the crowding is able to also extrude the cells and then they kill they get killed later and then uh, as i said to you has clear implications to cancer and we will show you that when we block this mechanism so if you don't have this anymore this is what happened okay so now let's go and i will give you the sections of okay so the key components or the key sections of the paper they have one question is like the the question is they want to determine how tissues removal cells in living systems so before this paper based on what we have learned in this class you will say necklace spaces cut spaces you 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 trigger apoptosis with cut, cut spaces so here what they're going to propose is like yes yes there are mechanisms that depend, are dependent of cut space so they are cut space dependent mechanisms at the cellular level but you will also find some cases of some mechanisms that it could be independent and both uh, can be used for cell removal yeah so this could be interesting to think about mechanisms to uh for, to treat cancer do we need to repair one mechanism do we need to repair the two mechanisms why there should be two mechanisms and um, in the in their case they focus on on crowding when they, you have a crowded epithelium they i will show you that both cells take place uh, sorry both mechanisms take place some of the cells will die through the independent mechanism and other ones will die it, through the dependent mechanisms however many more cells die through the uh, independent mechanism of apoptosis according to this paper um second thing um, uh, what they are going to try to determine in the second question is to determine how tissues remove cells under crowded condition in in vitro so what they are going to do is having this machine that is a machine that allowed to do this they are going to use tissue culture but they are going to expand the a layer mm -hmm, a thin layer where they will grow the cells yeah so they will start growing cells with a lot of space like what you see here so they expand it they have a lot of surface and so you will have a lot of a lot of cells then they will not stretch this anymore they will relax it and if they relax it I uh, hear you have low density yeah now you have high density so as you have high density what is going to happen is that you have too many cells for such a small space and what is going to happen is that you're going to create a crowded condition and what they are going to show is that when you have this crowded condition the cells are going to start leaving the epithelium again like when you're in a bus in, or in an elevator and there's too many people somebody has to leave so uh, later they're going to try to study um, if the cells are uh, that are extruded are alive or not yeah and they will show that the cells are alive after extrusion so what they are going to do is take this tissue from uh, the cells from tissue culture take the cells that are, have been extruded and they will uh, put it in a petri dish under the uh, under uh, conditions for growth and they will show that those and then you put them in a in a good condition in a petri dish they will keep growing and growing so in our words the cells were alive when they were extruded um, uh, the final question of this paper what they wanted to show is that uh, disrupting this process uh, of life cell extrusion in vivo is going to cause epithelial mass formation yeah so 
well, uh, they show in this paper is that here is the untreated epithelia. Here you can have a pharmacological blocking, and here you look what happened. You have a mass. Yeah, and look, they create a genetic blocking. They're making a mutation here, and you start finding when you target those regions, yeah, you, uh, you start uh, finding these uh, these uh, neoplastic, these abnormal growth in the tissues that mimic what happened during cancer. Okay, so this paper, in summary, showed these four components, and if you see, it has a clear application to study cancer.